Pastor Luke 15, 1. Now, we're going to, uh, we started back in January 2016 looking at all the red letter words in the Bible, the words of Jesus. We started when he was 12 years old, and as he, chronologically, we are following his life all through the New Testament and the words that he says. And each day, uh, he, we're seeing now in most of his ministry, he did like we do here in the campground. This is our 81st mes message from this series we're doing, the longest series I've ever preached. But it's awesome, and I'm enjoying it so much. I may start it again when I get through with it, because it is so good just to really get into the words that our Lord and Savior had for us. But most of the time that he walked and talked and people come around him and just people, as we walk through the park, if you can just imagine, that's the way Jesus did in their day. They didn't have cars to run around and not know their neighbor. They didn't have the phones that went everywhere in the Internet. They walked where they were going. At this particular time, he is walking toward Jerusalem, and many people are coming to him and asking questions, and a lot of them have are good questions they really want answers others are people that's trying to trap him uh, and again there's some comments being made and that's what we're going to see today as we look at his words we learn so much about him his ministry and also about living the christian life so it pleases him and that's our desire is to please him today i'm going to read a little bit more than i normally read so but you need to hear the whole thing as he said it and then we'll make our comments and that lord willing we'll still stay within about 20 minutes okay i'm not going to try to keep you all morning and uh, but it's the parable uh, there's three parables here the lost sheep the lost coin and the lost son matthew 15 and our luke 15 i'm sorry luke 15 beginning in verse 1 then it said then all the tax collectors and sinners drew near to him to hear him and Pharisees and scribes complained, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. Isn't that great? All right, we're going to talk about that. And he spoke this parable to them, saying, What man of you having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, does not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after the one which is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors and saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say to you that likewise there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine just persons who need no repentance. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp, sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it and when she has found it she calls her friends her neighbors together saying rejoice with me for i have found the peace which i lost likewise i say to you there is joy in the presence of the angels of god over one sinner who repents then he said a certain man had two sons and the younger of them said to his father father give me the portion of goods that falls to me notice what he says to me so he, referring to the dad, divided to them his livelihood. you got to notice that. He gave all his livelihood away to his two boys. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together that had been given to him, journeyed to the far country, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. But when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in the land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of the country, and he sent him in into his field to feed swine. And he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hard servants have bread enough to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will rise and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no more longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. And he arose, and he came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servant, Bring out the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet and bring the fatted calf here and kill it and let us eat and be happy. 
for this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. Now his older son was in the field, and as he came to draw near to the house, he heard music and dancing, so he called one of his servants and asked what these things meant. And he said to him, Your brother has come, and because he has received him safe and sound, your father has killed the fatted calf. Notice he's killed the fatted calf, but he was angry and would not go in. Therefore the father came out and pleaded with him. So he answered and said to his father, Lo, these many years I have been serving you, and I never transgressed your commandment at any time, and yet you never gave me a young goat. Uh, there's a difference there. The, he's killed the fatted calf, but this son is saying, you ain't even gave me a goat. Okay? All right. To make merry with my friends. But as soon as his son of yours come, who has devoured your livelihood with harlots and killed the... You killed the fatted calf for him. And he said to him, and this is very important, Son, you are always with me, and all that I have is yours, remember? It was right that you should make merry and be glad, for your brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. All right, so here we see a, a three wonderful parables. And a parable is nothing uh, but making a heavenly story uh, bringing it down to earth so we the people can understand it and especially the people that he was speaking to so this morning we're keeping in contact the scripture as he spoke it and i want to just look at hope you notice there's a common thread in each of these parables first of all in each one of them someone or something is lost secondly someone had lost them right or person had lost this item or person and was missing them desperately they, they they were missing these items thirdly every item or person were precious and valuable to someone every one of them were very precious and to somebody fourthly a search takes place a, tr a real hard search a lot of effort is put forth an effort is put forth to redeem or return that item or that person. Though you can, now, now, now the, the father didn't go after the son or the brother didn't go after him, but what did the father do? Every day it seems that he went out and he searched as far as he could for looking for that son to return home. And then most importantly, what I want us to focus on this morning is and every one of them, there was a time of rejoicing. A time of rejoicing. And even in heaven, he said, there is rejoicing over one soul who repents. So there's many lessons and hopefully a lot of encouragement right here in these four parables. But the reason, again, let's look at the rejoicing. The rejoicing. Why was there rejoicing? First of all, we look at the shepherd and the sheep there. You see, to a shepherd, the sheep are like family. They live with them 24-7. They are with their sheep. They name their sheep. These sheep are very precious to them. The shepherd actually placed himself in great danger to go look for that sheep, which he might find alive and which he might find it dead when he finds it. But because he himself could also be attacked by a wild animal there as he is searching for that sheep. But because you see, the sheep, their only protection from a predator is being part of something that is bigger than them. That's why he was able to leave that 90 and 9 in that flock. That massness of them is their safety right there as they are together. So that's their safety and being part of something that's bigger than them, part of the flock, and which is being part of the flock today, being part of the church, being part of what God is doing. That's where we, we find our strength, yes, in our Lord, but we find our strength in coming together and encouraging each other and praying for each other. So when it was when this lost sheep was brought back safe and alive and the shepherd was able to come back and be safe and alive wow it was a time to to be rejoicing they were home safe 
And then the woman and the coin. That coin represents her worth. You see, when a Jewish girl married, she would begin to wear a headband of 10 silver coins. That's a version of our modern day wedding band, okay? She would wear this headband with 10 coins in it and uh, to lose that would like be losing your wedding band, you know? It, it, it's just all kinds of I mean, things could happen. You know, there's problems there. It bothers you. It bothers those that love you. You see, that wedding band or that gold coin, it was a witness. It was a symbol that she belonged to a precious, loving family, right? That's what it means. We belong. We belong together, and we're loved, and we love. But she had lost that. Now, in the Palestinian homes, uh, they had very few windows if they had any. So their homes were very dark. So it says she had to take a light. Now, that would take an effort to get forth a light that would light up that dark home. And then she would search and sweep, and she would search high and low. For it. She, she went, and we don't know how long it took her. We don't know how long it took the shepherd to find the sheep, but we know they put forth great effort to bring those things, or to find those things, to bring them back. So she, again, we see that getting that light, as we need to, anytime we go forth, make sure we're carrying the light of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ within us. So to have that testimony, you see, a belonging again, after that hard work, it was a time of rejoicing that what was lost is now found. And then, we, of course, you know the Father and the Son. That represents joy, love, life. By the youngest son requesting his inheritance from his father, he was basically in that day saying that he wished his father was dead. He was saying, Dad, I wish you were dead. Give me my inheritance. I want, I want you to be dead. You're dead to me. You've heard people say that today. You're just dead to me. That's what he was saying to his father. Let's just take a little side note here. If the lost sheep was lost through foolishness of the sheep, which it was, then the coin was lost through the carelessness of someone else, which some are lost that way. Then the son was lost because of willfulness. He wanted to have his way, so he rebelled against his father. He broke his father's heart. So the son basically is selfish. He's allowing sin to control him, his selfishness of himself. And people, sin, we see it all around us. It promises freedom. Oh, yeah, get away from all that. You can be free. Make all the decisions you want. You can follow any religion. You can do anything you want. Just, you know, just be yourself. Do it. Just do it. You know, sin promises freedom. But it only brings bondage. You become bound by so many things that begin to control you. Not only substance, but your wants and desires. Sin promises success, but it always brings failure. Sin promises life, but the Bible teaches us the wages of sin is death. The Father, though we see, presented the Son with grace as the son repented. You see, what most people fail to realize is according to the law of Moses in Deuteronomy 21, 18 through 21, by the son doing what he did to his father, he had made a decision to dishonor his father. And according to the law, it was the community's responsibility to actually stone that son. So that son should be dead. But the father sees him coming at a far distance before everybody else sees him. That's why he was always looking for him. He wanted to see him before anybody else saw him. He knew he was coming. He was praying. He was anxious for him to come. And he kept looking for him. And as soon as he saw him, he came running to him. Oh, that's going to help. <laughs> it ain't not work. He came running to him which your fathers didn't do. I mean, that was, you know, not dignified. But here the father comes running to him, and he hugs him, representing grace. 
He's giving the son something he doesn't deserve. And guess what else he's doing? He's making it impossible for the community to stone him. Because in order to stone the son, they first must take out the dad. They got to take out the father. So we see grace so predominantly here, added here. That's why he could say, my son that was dead is alive again. So rejoice which is the reason that the father was rejoicing and he was able to throw this party for his son. Is that his son is alive again and, and doing well. But I know I could go on and go on with this today. And there's a lot of things we could add about the father, about the son, about the brother that stayed at home and pouted because they didn't feel the, kill the fatty goat for him. But you know, one thing I would say, that son probably represents most of us, if we're honest. You know, I would say most of y'all are like me. Like I said, I've been in church all my life. Mom and dad took me to church nine months before I was born. And so I've been in church. I received the Lord Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior at the age of 12, as I shared my testimony last week in Chicago, in downtown Chicago, at a mission my dad pastored. So I've been in church all my life. And most of you probably have too. And sometimes when these people come in and they've been out in the world and they've got all kinds of scars and things on them and their body and their life and, and they get so much acknowledgement because they came to Christ. Now, we get a little jealous. We should be rejoicing. And I hope we do, but may we learn from it. Now, how am I receiving that? You know, yeah, they're not perfect, but guess what? I wasn't either. Even though I was at, saved at 12, I wasn't perfect. Still ain't. You know, so we, we come there. And again, we can talk about the younger son, but, and there's so many more little things I can tell you. But I want to close with rejoicing with us that we are here today. Like me, again, you may resemble the older son. You may resemble the nine coins that weren't lost. You may resemble the 99 sheep that stayed through the tough times and stayed together. And I hope you are. And you've been walking with the Lord, but I pray you never stop walking with Him. You grow in that walk and you begin to look around you and see what God is doing, how amazing he is and what he's working in your life and we love to continue to tell stories of how he's working in our life and how he will work in and hear your stories how he's working in your life i hope it encourages and i hope i can encourage you maybe if uh to let you know that we have a commission those that's been in this for a long time we have a commission that means an order to go forth our marching orders to go out and reach find that lost sheep Put ourselves in danger. Find that lost coin. Be the light that searches high and low. And look for also that wayward brother and love him. We also, you see, because at one time, again, no matter if you were saved as a young person as I was and been in church all your life, I was still a sinner. And a sinner has to be saved by the grace of God. And also you had to. We all have to come to that point. We also can rejoice today that Maybe you are here, and maybe you are that lost sheep. And Christ wants you to know he gave his life. He left the portals of glory. He placed himself in the Virgin Mary. He lived 33 and a half years without sin, that he could go to the cross, that he could place himself upon the cross and take our sins upon him, that we might obtain his righteousness. He suffered and died for you, but he rose victoriously on the third day. You may be that lost coin. Yes. You may be that wayward son, but the son or the father is standing with outstretched arms. Our heavenly father is just waiting to embrace you with his grace and love and welcome you home and, and take you from that enslavement, that in bondagement that you're in, in Satan and in this world. I hope the scriptures we've shared with you today and have read and maybe the comments that have helped you understand that God really loves you, no matter what stage or what part of life you may be in, that he desires a relationship with you. And he has by his grace done all that you can have life and have it more and abundantly. 
And in just a moment, we're going to close with prayer. And as I close in prayer, if the Lord has spoke to you and you are that lost sheep and you're ready to come home, and we would love for you to just come and share with us. and pray. We would pray with you. And if you're on the Internet and we're picking us up over the web somewhere, there's ways to contact us. We'd love to pray with you and exchange with you how you can know the Lord Jesus Christ and how you can know that embracing of the Heavenly Father today. And, uh, and if again, if you have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ today, I want to encourage you, let your light shine in this dark world. You know, be about His work. And don't be jealous of others. Just encourage each other. You know, I'm actually glad as this verse started, I said, now listen to what they said. I'm glad they began to accuse Jesus of eating and dining with sinners. Isn't that great? That's what He was accused of. Because, again, I am one. And He seeks the lost. He will come and dine with you. He will take time to be with you. Please allow me to close with these scriptures that you will understand what we're saying. In Romans 5, 12, he says, Therefore, just as one man through sin entered into the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men, because all have sinned. Romans 6, 23 says, For the wages of sin, which we all have sinned, is death. Like the son, he's dead, but he's alive. But the give of, gift of God is eternal life in our Lord Jesus Christ. How do you understand that? You see, God said but He demonstrated His love toward us that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. You can receive that gift, He tells us in Romans 10, 9, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness. With the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the Scripture says, Therefore... Whosoever believes on him will not be put to shame, for whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's a promise from God's Word. And I pray today that you know him. Again, thank you for allowing us to be obedient to what God has called us to do. And again, it wouldn't be possible without you being here for us to share with you. And we just thank you for your prayers. And we want to encourage you today to live as if Christ died yesterday, that he arose this morning, and he's coming back tomorrow. Live it. Live Christ in your life every day. Would you pray with us? Father, we again thank you for this time. Again, for this beautiful tabernacle cathedral lord you prepared for us out here lord that we can just proclaim your word and we can pray, complain proclaim our love for you but most of all your love for all and lord we pray for those that are here lord if they're fit in that as the lost sheep the lost coin or the lost son lord and you've sent this message for them i pray they know that they are people here that love them but most of all that you love them and you want to restore them you want to take them that bondage, Lord, that they're in and set them free that they might have life and have it more abundantly in you. And Lord, for us that we have confessed, we're probably part of that 99 or that those nine coins or that brother that stayed home. Lord, may we realize how blessed we are, Lord, and how honored we are to be in the flock, in the band, in the family. Lord, and may... We understand it's your desire that more come. Lord, and may we be about your work, loving others and sharing your word wherever we go. May you be honored, for it's in the holy name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen.